welcome everybody to the Juice House Party. It's just like any other house party, except for everyone's over six feet apart, and we don't have to buy nearly as much food, so it's a win-win. My name is JJ Carroll, and if you've been around Juice for a while, you may recognize me from On Ice, where I interview victims, sorry, I, I interview guests in ice baths. I am also a worship leader up at Eastside Christian Church in Anaheim, California, which I know that we have some of our youth tuning in tonight, so shout out to you guys. And hey guys, I'm Rachel Hughes. You may also recognize me from On Ice, where I play the Ice Princess. My husband, Mark, is a junior high pastor over at Pacific Coast Church. So, hey guys in San Clemente at Now and Forever, shout out. Thanks for tuning in. Well, we're doing our part to social distance. Let's go ahead and look here. We've got, yeah, seven and a half feet. Woo. So, uh, you know, we just wanted to do a little monologue to go ahead and start off the show. Obviously, we don't have an audience here to react to all of our jokes. So, uh, show us some love in the comment section below. Well, it's an unprecedented time in our country. Shoppers have stopped fighting over the last TV and are now fighting for the last TP. If you had told me last year that in 2020 we'd be having middle-aged women attacking each other at Walmart over the last pack of toilet paper, well, actually, now that I think about it, I probably would have believed you because it's Walmart. Look, <laughs> it's a difficult time. Everyone is doing their part. Even companies like IKEA have announced that they will start transitioning their production from making furniture to making surgical masks. Once nurses receive them, every mask will come with a detailed set of instructions and only take about three hours to assemble with a lot of pieces that are gonna go missing. Plus, each mask comes with a free side of meatballs. Woo, delicious. Apple is also trying to help out, announcing that some of its manufacturings will shift towards producing hand sanitizer. Bottles will come in both 64 and 256 gigabyte options. However, you're gonna have to buy new accessories when they come out with their new sanitizer model next year. Also. It's gonna be twice the price for no particular reason. Also, it's gonna get progressively slower until you update the sanitizer or just buy a new one altogether. Oh, and lastly, uh, it's going to be sold only in stores at the mall with tons of people waiting around to fix their broken sanitizer and you're gonna regret not setting up an appointment. This virus has really brought people together. Countless videos have gone viral because of famous people singing songs to remind us to stay at home. Yeah, while they sit in their freaking mansions. Yeah, really easy for you to say, Will Smith. You have two saunas, a bowling alley. You're one of the coolest people on the planet. I love you, I wanna be you. And you're the Fresh Prince of Bel-Air, okay? Right, okay, I'm sorry, it's got a little heated. It's a crazy time, everybody. Even Disneyland is closed. The happiest place on earth. It's not so happy right now. I really don't have a joke here. I've just been really missing those giant turkey legs. Well, we've got a great show for you guys tonight. We may have an empty studio, but we've got a full roster of some great guests. We've got Phil Joel from the Newsboys. We've got Clayton King, illusionist Brady Lee, Chad Matson from Unspoken, Gavi, comedian Nazareth, comedian Leland Clausen, Urban D and Clay Finisan from North Point Worship. It's going to be epic, so stick around. Don't go anywhere else on YouTube right now, okay? You don't need to. All right, well, Rachel is heading off to the booth. We've got Chad Matson from Unspoken on Skype. So here we go. Rachel's about to interview him right now. Shout out to my middle school crew and now and forever in San Clemente. Love you guys. Hey, oh, Chad, how's it going? How are you doing in this time of quarantining? Um, I am a little bit bored, but I've been doing all right. Lots of bike rides. Yeah, yeah, lots of bike rides. So you're home with Katie and your three kids. My wife has coined this term, and I don't know if it's that appropriate, but one thing you'll learn about me is that I'm not always appropriate, but that's okay. It's not going to be too off the wall, but Love it. you know how when we go to college, you know, you have that term that is the freshman 15 where you would be right. Yeah. Having the openness to do what you will with your time as the first time maybe in your uh, life. Yeah. Well, she coined the term the quarantine 15 um, because ah. for the first two weeks, you know, here we're just like, we have nothing to do. So we're just trying to fill our time and all yeah. these things. And so um, instead of that, we decided that we would go on all these bike rides and be outside as much as possible. Because yeah. uh, uh, oddly enough, vitamin D is one of the greatest things for um, us to, to, to get well when we're sick, period. Yeah. Yeah, that's good. What's your go-to snack? I mean, anything that's extremely unhealthy, but we <laughs> yes. eat pretty much organic and all natural-ish. 
Um, I would say more than ish. I would say my okay. family definitely, but I'm. You could one find me buying Doritos. one of those Christmas. Exactly, yeah. like the Christmas tree little Debbie things, like uh-huh. all of those embarrassing snacks. Wonderful. Okay, so in this time of uncertainty, I think it's easy for us to be anxious. And your song, You've Always Been, is such a great reminder to Christ being our foundation. And so can you talk about that song a little bit for us? For sure. Well, in fact, it really, because of trauma in our past and childhood stuff, and I've been 17 years sober from drug addiction. And, you know, my wife has her own story. And um, I would say like five years ago, six years ago, we really started to deal with some anxiety as a family Mm -hmm. and um and it turned into medications and then this medication didn't work and that one didn't work and this one side effects were too bad and this one did this and Mm -hmm. and it was like finally we felt like um you know we were we we had moved on the moved on from medication helping us and really dove into like some pretty um intense uh therapy and went to a retreat Mm -hmm. and um, and all of this stuff. So all that to say is that debilitating anxiety is what we were going through. And at some of the biggest points in our career at home, I'm like, I, I just don't know if I can leave and uh, leave my family like yeah. this anymore, specifically my wife, you know? Mm. And, uh, and I would say that, you know, she, she was probably experiencing 5% living quality. So like, mm-hmm. You know, that's how bad it was. Wow. And uh, so I, we know a lot about anxiety. Mm-hmm. And I would say fast forward a couple of years to where we are. Yeah. Um, you know, 85 percent, you know, like even this situation for uh, that God can do anything that he has the power to to deliver us from these things mm-hmm. and to um, bring us hope and peace. Um, and, and so if any of the people that are watching out there today and just feel extremely hopeless, which we, we did, yeah. and I've never felt that way as a believer, I felt hopeless as an addict, but when I got saved and so this was like, wow. Um, and so this song and this whole record is really, um, we wrote for us, what, what song, what do we need to hear mm-hmm. as, as believers and family people and, and relationships and all of that. So we wrote a record to ourselves, basically. Yeah, so true. It's so and to true. know he's not going to leave us, you know, he's not going to mm-hmm. just leave us and forsake us. You know, he's going, he has a purpose. He's kind and good and, and he's all love. I mean, I'm just reading like Psalm 117 was like, the Lord's love is powerful and his faithfulness endures forever. It's like mm. four verses. And I was like, wow. I would normally pass over that, but e- these are the things that are true. Mm-hmm. And and if you think about what Jesus said, one of the most awesome things he said was that heaven and earth, as we know, it's going to pass away. But his word is what stands the test of time. Mm-hmm. It's beyond time. It remains forever. So if we're yeah. putting our hope in CNN or Fox or whatever, or yeah. the stock market or our own job security, then we're going to be disappointed. But if we stand on his word, and, and we look to him, then we're going to have hope and confidence. It's, yes. it's preach it. Like yes. Nothing else. Yeah, <laughs> you are on it. I love it. So I was wondering if you guys could perform it for us. But before you do, can you tell me if you had to sing a karaoke song that wasn't performed by you, what would it be? Uh, it would probably be Ice Ice Baby by Vanilla Ice. No way! That's my go-to, too! That's yeah. a wonderful I grew rap. up on 90s R&B and hip-hop, so yeah. um, that's probably one of the most appropriate mm-hmm. songs of my past. Okay, love um, it. So I think that's cool. But I, I did want to, um, before you play this song, yeah. I wanted to share one thing, because okay. I think it was, I read this back, this is from My Utmost for His Highest, which is Oswald Chamber, mm-hmm. um, but I wanted to I wanted to just say this because I think as I was thinking about today and being on with you, yeah. I was thinking about like, what's God saying to us? Like, what is, you know, and I think that slowing down part and that relational part yep. and less screen time and more together time. Um, but Oswald Chambers says this, this was in, Jan- in January 18th, hmm. the greatest competitor of true devotion to Jesus is the service we do for him. Mm. Think about this. It's like we think that God is so concerned about the gifts we have and what we can do for Mm -hmm. him. And although he uses that and he he's given us those passions and gifts, 
He's way more concerned about the relational, the character, the heart, you know, the... Um, Towards him just first the connect- versus exactly. serving Towards for him. him. Yeah. A- opposed to yeah. service. And we always go to service. We're working, yeah. we're working, we're working. Yep. And if I think back to Mary and Martha, I think like Martha is this lady who's mad. And why is she mad? Because she's not sitting at Jesus feet. Anytime that we're always working, then things aren't going the way we want them to and X, Y, and Z. Mm -hmm. And we're starting to get turned up inside Mm -hmm. and we start to get irritated. It's because we're not meant for service. We're meant to sit at the feet and out of that um, serve. Yeah. And so I would just thought that was so profound, like the true, the biggest competitor to our true devotion to God mm-hmm. is, is not, you know, social media or money or all. It's, it's the work that we do for him because we mm-hmm. put it at such a high place. This has cut the legs out of all of that for us. And, and I honestly think that this could be a huge impact to in our culture yeah. and, and really just a fire starter and, and mm-hmm. on the brink of revival because mm. none of us are finding our identity in our work, mm-hmm. um, but we're having to just connect with God. And, and honestly, I can, the last two weeks has been fine for me, but mm-hmm. I find myself like the last four or five days, like walking around trying to figure out ways to annoy my family because <laughs> I'm bored. And, uh, and I'm realizing that like, I just need to continue to, 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 get into God's presence and read his word and stand on that because those things aren't fading or shifting. It's beautiful. Yeah, I love that. Thank you, Chad, for that encouragement. Thank you for joining us today. You're welcome. Okay, so tell us about the song we're about to play. So what we did was we had this tour cancel, Bethel Music and Matt Marr, and it Mm. just was an interesting group of people that I was super pumped. We only got to be four days on this. Yeah. And uh, and the, the tour canceled, and so our our record company was thinking about bringing something to people's living rooms Mm -hmm. and how, how could we do that? And, uh, so they reached out to all these different people, uh, the GMAs and different radio stations. And so it all was like, it was actually kind of a big deal because there's a lot of technical things to get. I have no idea what I'm talking about, but I know it's complicated. (laughs) And, uh, and so they streamed at all these different places, super cool. And so we went into a studio and um and and just recorded kind of a a live session of some of the songs that we were playing on the tour Mm -hmm. with some of the bands that we were also on the tour with and so um this next song was what is our new single for one that's out on the radio um but for two just obviously means a lot to us as to all of our songs Mm -hmm. um but this just speaks i feel like it's um relevant because um, you know, we can often think, um, you know, has God abandoned us? Has he left us? Well, what are we going to do? What is he going to do? How is he going to fix it? And this is a song that just um, reminds us to look to our past, uh, which then gives us hope in our in our present situation that God isn't going to leave us because he ain't ever left us before. Mm-hmm. So, you know, um, I, I hope it means as much to you all as it does to us. Um, yes, we are so you. excited to listen. Thank you. I've had good days, I've had bad days, tasted victory and defeat. I've had problems, biggest planets, turned to pebbles when you speak. And I've had nothing to my name, I've never lacked for anything, no, cause you were there with me. You've been my savior, sustainer when I'm at my end. My healer, redeemer again and again. My mother and my father, brother, sister and friend. And everything I've needed, Lord, you've always been. And everything I've needed, Lord, you've always been. And when I stand before you guilty, oh, your mercy bears my blame. When in pride I think I'm worthy, you point out the price you paid. When I wander far away, you keep calling out my name. You don't give up on me. You've been my savior, sustain. Everything I've needed, Lord, you've always been. And every- 
Oh yes, you have Jesus Time and time again Everything I've needed You've always been Shout out to Catalyst Movement in Billings, Montana at Faithy Church. I love you guys! All right, it's time for the first game of the night. In this game, JJ will give three youth pastors five items to find in their house. They get a point for each item they bring back and three points for the special item in each round. They will only have 45 seconds, and if they don't make it back in time, they get zero. The youth pastor with the most points after four rounds wins. All right, JJ, let's get it started. Well, youth pastors, thank you so much for joining us and, and playing a game. You're here to potentially win a Nintendo Switch, a sports pack, or a mystery bucket for your youth group. So are, are, you, are you guys ready for that? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. All right. Well, hey, why don't you introduce yourselves real quick? You know, my name is Shane. Um, from Billings, Montana, uh, Faith Chapel here in Billings. Hey, my name is Oz uh, from Orange, California, uh, from Revive Covenant Church. Uh, and I'm Josh. Uh, I'm from Yorba Linda, California, and I pastor at Rose Drive Friends <coughs> Church in Yorba Linda, California. All right, Shane, Oz, and Josh, you've been briefed on the rules. You know what to do. We're going to get started with round one. I'm going to read the five items. Here we go. Round one, I need you to bring me a board game, a roll of toilet paper, canned food, your comfort food snack, and your three-point item is a flashlight on your marks. Get set. You got 45 seconds. Go! This is where it gets real fun, because you just get to hear the sounds. You know that they're rummaging through everything, junk drawers, trying to find these things. They know where they're at, but, uh, you know, sometimes. You got 30 seconds. 30 I love my job. 20 seconds. Remember, if you don't make it back, you get zero points for the round. So are you going to play it safe, or are you going to go big? You've got 12 seconds, 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5. Okay, everybody, everybody is back in time. Okay, so let's go ahead and go over some points here. Shane, we'll start with you. What have you, what have you got? Oh, I got toilet paper, flashlight, oh, the flashlight. Uh, bush chili beans, cheese and... Firefly Monopoly. Wow, so you only missed one. Wait, no, you got them all, right? Yeah, you got them all. So you got, Shane gets eight points. Oz, let's see what you got. I got exploding kittens. Great. Got this uh, protein granola oats and chocolate snack here. Roll of toilet paper, last one. You better, you better uh, get to Costco. <laughs> All right. You can't go wrong with this. You can't. All right, Josh, let's see what you got. All right, so I only got three because I had to move really fast from where I was. So I'm kind of in a not familiar place. So I got the toilet paper. This is my comfort food. It's actually sauce because I could put this on anything and I'll be comforted. This is sweet chili sauce. Okay, I'll, I'll, I'll give that to you because that stuff's delicious. Okay. And then this is my board game right here. The Game wow. of Life SpongeBob Edition. Ooh. Yes. Okay. All right. Well, Shane is in first place. Uh, Oz and Josh, you guys got to pick it up in these next rounds if you want a chance to win. Okay, here we go. On to round two. You ready? All right, you'll have 45 seconds to find the following. A Ziploc bag, a glass of milk, chapstick, socks that aren't black or white, and your three-point item is something that has to do with Shrek. I'm going to leave it at that. On your mark, get set. 45 seconds starts now. 
I think I'm most interested in finding out what the uh, you know something that has to do with Shrek's going to be. I mean, that, that could that could be anything. I mean, as long as you can convince me. Thirty seconds left. Thirty seconds. Some somebody got in the way in there. I can I can tell that. <laughs> Hopefully, no glass is broken. Fifteen seconds. You got fifteen seconds. Ten, nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three. Hey guys, I don't live here. <laughs> okay. Uh, All right, everybody. Everybody. My refrigerator broke. Everybody made it back in time. So, Josh, let's start with you this time. What What have you got? Again, disclaimer. I don't. I, this is not my normal living space, so I have no idea where anything's at. <laughs> So I can you mean, you're meaning glass. to tell me that, that that Peppa Pig calendar or, or whatever that is, that's not yours? That's not your room decoration? It's not my room. <laughs> <laughs> so I, have, I just have an empty glass. <laughs> Didn't even get the milk. I'll, I'll, give you a, I'll give you a half point for that. I'll give you a half. Thank you. And then I did get, I'm continuing with the SpongeBob theme, a sock that wasn't white or black. Got my Patrick sock right oh, here. Impressive. Oh. Wow. And that's all you got? That's it. I don't know where anything else right. is at. <laughs> a point and a half for Josh. Here we go this round. Okay, Oz, let's go to you. Uh, I got some vanilla latte chapstick right here. Vanilla latte chapstick. Wow. Uh, got some striped socks right here. Striped socks. Are those like baby socks or what? Uh, or are they just folded really tight? They're, just, they're folded really tight. Oh. <laughs> baby socks. And... Uh, less than half. <laughs> hey, it still counts. You poured the milk. I'll take it. <laughs> and those are your three? Those are my three. All right. Shane, what do you got? I got Burt's Bees. Burt's Bees. I got the Ziploc bag. Ziploc. You got Lots some milk. <laughs> I got socks with lizards on them. The socks. And then I got the whole oh, story. Wow. Oh, got, got all of them in there. Took the cake. I was looking for a waffle mix, but I couldn't find any. So <laughs> I would have taken that waffle, waffle mix, an onion, you know, anything that has to do with track. All you had to do was convince me. Okay, so so Shane, another seven points for you there. So wow. All right, so so Shane is at 14, Oz, you've got seven, and Josh, you've got five. <laughs> Y'all ready for round three? All right, your round three items are hand sanitizer, candy, a candle, a box of cereal, and a book by C.S. Lewis, 45 seconds starts now. Oh my goodness. Let's see if Shane can keep it up with his perfect score so far. I mean, I, I, I don't know. 30 seconds, everybody. 30 seconds. I'm interested to see if somebody is going to maybe, you know, come back and, and maybe not, not come back in time. Under 20 seconds. You got 15 seconds left. Oh my God, goodness, Shane. 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. <laughs> that was so, that was so close. All right. Oz, let's go ahead and start with you. <laughs> what have you got? Definitely recommend this book by C.S. Lewis, Screwtape. If you haven't read it, really, really good. I recommend reading it with an adult, though. It gets kind of scary, especially when you read it at night. <laughs> Fair enough. And then I got a amber amber candle. That's uh, that's, that's all I'm gonna say there. Okay. Then we got some uh, Berry Kids Crunch. Uh, yeah. One of my personal favorites. Hard to find, but really good. Is that like a knockoff of Captain Crunch? Yes, but it's way better. Ooh. Those are some fighting words, Oz. All right. So that's are, are, is that it? Oh, and uh, last but not least, uh, eggnog truffles. 
Um, the only thing that I could find that's still been there. <laughs> High shelf life. I am not going to lie. That sounds atrocious. <laughs> but, uh, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm going to trust. I'm going to trust that is good. Okay. All right, Oz. Good, good, good work there. Shane, what do you got? Another perfect score? Uh, I got the series classic. Oh, G.S. Oh, yes, Lewis. <laughs> okay. Got all of those. But, uh, Reese's, because hello. 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 Honeycomb. Solid. Hand sanitizer. Homemade from American Pharmaceuticals. And then I don't have a candle, but I grabbed a Woodwick thing because, you know, we're not allowed to have those. Yes, I am sorry, I'm Shane. Tried. You tried, but I cannot accept that. That is not a candle. That is, a, that is incense. But if you, if you light this on fire. <laughs> no, not going to not gonna, not gonna no. work. All right, Josh, what do you got? All right, so I got my Mere Christianity book right there. Got a candle here. Don't know what scent, what flavor, or anything, but... G give us a it smells, description. It smells like you were to walk through... Like the men's, uh, the men's cologne section in Nordstrom or Macy's or J.C. Penney. Oh, perfect! I, I can, I can, I can, I can get a sense of it now. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Just picture that, and then also brought some M and M's. M and M's. Mm. Yes. Money. That, All right. There, there's no, there's no cereal here. So. <laughs> no cereal at the place that's not yours. <laughs> So good. All right, hold on. Let me let me just uh, let me do some math. All right. At the end of round three, the scores are as followed: Shane, you've got twenty; Oz, you've got thirteen; and Josh, you've got ten. All right. So here we go, guys. Here we go. Round four, final round. This is your last chance. You guys ready for this? And here's a little, uh, here's something that's, that's extra fun. The, the last item in this one is not only worth three points, it's worth five points. So, but good luck on having it. All right, so here we go. Round four, what I need. Hair product. Uh, oh, come on. <laughs> you know, we're in this weird time. And, uh, you know, uh, what, what happens if, you know. You know if you have to defend yourself, so a weapon of choice, a stuffed animal, a VHS tape, and your five-point item, a Walkman, or portable CD player, something like that. All right, so here we go again. Your time starts now. Yeah. Go. So for those of you that don't know what a Walkman is, it's this portable CD player or tape player that you could, you know, used to be able to take on a jog before there were iPods. It's a great thing. All right, you guys, 30 seconds. Ooh, snap. You know, the, the, the interesting thing here is if somebody has a Walkman, they could, they could potentially come back and win this. It's anybody's game right now. All right, 12 seconds, 10. Nine and everybody. Eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. <laughs> that was close, Shane. You almost got zero points from that. <laughs> I know. I, I, I went back and up. <sighs> okay. All right. All right. Oz, uh, just because I see a, an extra guest with you, we'll, we'll start with you. What do you got? <laughs> Uh, you want to say hi to the camera? You want to say hi to the kids? <laughs> I got blue for a weapon of choice, but he's really distracted with uh, with this uh, this really beat up uh, duck. That's my my second item here. Okay, wait. So your dog is your weapon of choice? Yeah, dog is a weapon of choice. He he's fearless. I'm gonna give it to you. I'm gonna give it to you. And uh, last but not least, I got Old Spice pomade. This stuff is really good. So those those are your three. Those that's all you got. That's all I got. Okay. okay. Shane, let's go up to you. What do you got? Got my stuffed animal right here. What's your stuffed animal's name? Uh, um, um, uh, I don't remember. I think it. My mom named it Shane Bear when I was a little Aww. kid. 
No, that's too cute. <laughs> I got uh, Batman and Robin VHS right here. <clears throat> Weapon of choice. Very large, large rolling pin. Yep. Protect yourself yep. well. That, uh, that would definitely be effective. I thought this was an iPod, but it's a camera. So Ooh. I tried. Close enough. <sighs> All right, so three. And Josh, what do you got? All right, so I got my stuffed animal here. <laughs> What's your stuffed animal's name? Yeah, well, you know, it's it's not really mine. It's kind of my niece's, but, you know, <laughs> <laughs> along with the this Peppa Pig bed, you know, so. Oh, that's not where you sleep? <laughs> right, that's not it, but, you know, uh, I brought my hair products, Suavecito Pomade. Uh, I'm, I'm somewhat of a pacifist, so I don't really have a weapon except for scissors would be my weapon of choice. That'll work. That'll work. Um, I don't have a Walkman, but I do have vinyl. I don't know if you want to count that for anything. It's pretty throwback. <laughs> Judges, what do you say? It's a little bit of a throwback. Yeah. All right. We're going to full. We're gonna give you the the judges are saying we're we're gonna give you we're gonna give you the full points there so that's five points. Oh wow, amazing! And that's it. That's it. That's all I got. All right, let me do some tallying here. All right, gentlemen, I have the uh, the final scores in my hand. In third place. With a respectable 16 points, Oz. In second place, in second place with a respectable 18 and a half points, we've got Josh. And in first place, coming in uh, hot, Shane with 23 points. So Shane, you are the winner of this game. So you are going to either win a Nintendo Switch the sports package, or a mystery bucket. So this is your chance. Plead to everybody watching on the stream, what do you want? Man, you know, it'd be, it'd be tough. I, I kind of want that mystery bucket because I want to know what you came up with. But the Switch is really enticing. Uh, you know what? I, I think I'm going to go with the, I, I want to know what you come up with. I'm, I'm, I'm gutsy. I'm going to take the chance. That's what I want. Shane wants the mystery bucket, so if, make sure you write in the comments, Shane, mystery bucket, vote for him at the end of the stream. We're going to be count, uh, counting up all the votes, and we're going to be sending the youth pastors what it is that you decided for them to get. So Shane, congrats. Oz, Josh, thank you guys so much for playing. You guys are amazing. Great speed on that, and, uh, and uh, we'll, we'll, see you. we'll see you guys soon. Awesome. See you later. Thank you. Hey, Oz here. A uh, quick shout out to Revive Youth from Revive Covenant Church in Orange, California. I think we're all ready for some belly laughs. Please welcome comedian Leland Clausen. Hey there, my name is Leland Clausen. I'm a comedian. I usually do it in front of people, but, uh, but I'm excited to be a part of the Juice House Party. Uh, I'm excited to be a part of the, hey, these are, these are different times. Uh, I found the best room I could possibly to be alone to do this, and it's echoey garbage room in the basement. But I'm here, and I'm I'm ready to bring you guys a little bit of a little bit of jokes, a little bit of fun. Um, hey, I, listen, I lost like about five months of work, something like that. We're all we're all kind of going through some stuff, uh, but God's got us. God's got us. Uh, he's faithful, and he's got a plan. We don't always understand his plan. But he's got a plan, so I'm glad to be in God's hands. Hey, I just I hope that he's washing them for 20 seconds uh, thoroughly. Well, <laughs> that's what they're telling us, right? Wash your hands for 20 seconds. 20 seconds. 20 seconds. I wish I could get done in that amount of time with these hands. I'm, <laughs> you know what I mean? I 20 seconds. 20 minutes. That's how long it takes me. I'm not I'm not washing in a sink like you guys. Okay, I'm washing in a bathtub. It's they're big. Is what I'm trying to say. And by the way, I, I went up to, I was at Costco picking up some hand sanitizer and somebody looked at me and they're giving me the old stink eye like I'm hoarding. Like, are you going to take all that hand sanitizer? Like, like it's like a month's worth or something. It's like, this is two, Tuesday. That's how long this is going to last. 
Have you seen my hands? Tuesday. That's that's where this is going. I uh, um, speaking of of the of the hoarding thing though, I I don't understand toilet paper hoarding. I I don't get it. What, is there a symptom uh, that I don't know about? What's going on? Why do you need so much toilet paper? We couldn't find any. The last couple times I've been to the grocery store, there's none. There's, we had to buy this like fancy stuff that we would never, it's in a different class than I'm used to. This fancy four ply, 16 ply, I don't know what it is. It's the softest toilet paper. It was, it's like a kitten. It's like you're rubbing yourself with a kitten. I, I couldn't use it. I, I'll be honest with you. Morally, it just felt wrong. I've probably talked too much about toilet paper. I should probably ease off about that. Let's talk about my hands. Let's get back to the hands. The big old, they're big, right? Like these, it's, you know what? It's, it is worse when I move them. That's what I have noticed. When I start moving them around, people get, like I just show you my hands, like, well, he's got big hands. And then I start moving them around. It's like, whoa, easy, buddy. You put those in your pocket. I can't, they don't fit. All right? Every time I shake somebody's hand, I tickle their armpit. These are big, <laughs> these are big hands. That's what I'm trying to say. I used to do the uh, the sign language for the deaf. I used to do the hand signs for the deaf until it made me stop. Because I was making the deaf people mad. Or something. Stop it, it's too loud. It's too loud. Cut it out. Usually this is where people would laugh. So I'm just giving you some time to laugh. <laughs> Uh, look how small my head is in portion of my hands, by the way. Did you see this? Look how small. I've got a tiny little nugget of a head. I do, well, here, here's the numbers so you get an idea. Uh, glove size, uh, 4XL. Um, hat size, youth medium. So that's embarrassing. <laughs> Seriously, I've got my gloves are big and tall. got my hats at Baby Gap. It's like, this is not cool. This is, you have a terrible selection here. They're tiny. <sighs> I don't know, the latest thing that happened though, I was playing the uh, the Xbox 360 with my son there. It's, uh, it, like it has the, it's an older console now. It's like the, uh, it has the Kinect, it has the Kinect camera. So you have the controller, but your body's also the controller. You know what I'm talking about? We were doing, we were doing Nike Plus for Kinect. It's like a home workout you do right with the Kinect. Okay, so if you're doing a workout video, in the old days, we used to do workout videos, but you could cheat on the video. Maybe I'll do the exercises well enough. He doesn't know, right? With the personal trainer. He's like, hey, get your knees up higher! Or, or whatever, right? In order for them to do it, they have to know what your body looks like. So you gotta stand in front of the Kinect camera while it's mapping out your body. And I was watching it on the screen. As I was mapping out my body, it got up to my head, and I'm not, I'm not making this up. There's this little red square on my head with this error message. And you know what the error message said? Cannot detect head. So, okay, that's funny. Xbox has got jokes. Is that what you got? You got jokes? Turned around, my son was howling, right? He thought it was the funniest thing he did. He's literally bent over shaking, he's laughing so hard. I'm like, what are you laughing at? You look just like me, you freak. You're laughing at yourself right now, that's what you're doing. I don't know, I, uh, I had a lady come to me after a show one time. She was offended I was doing jokes about the size of my hands. The very joke she just heard, she was offended. And she said, and I quote, sets a bad example for kids about making fun of themselves. What do you even say to that, you know? I was like, um, maybe comedy's not for you. It's not your thing. It's my own fault though, because I, uh, I married her, you know, so. Um, speaking of which, I should probably uh, go watch some TV with her, I promised her. It's kind of our, our COVID, our COVID thing. We're gonna watch a little TV together. Uh, thanks, thanks for letting me be a part of the house party. Uh, enjoy the rest of it. Hope you got some chuckles out of that. Um, I've never done it with no audience before. I've done it with like two people. So uh, it was weird, but I uh, hope you enjoyed it at home. My name's Leland Clausen. Uh, thanks, thanks for having me. Well, Clayton King, thank you so much for joining us for the Juice House Party. How are you holding up right now? Hey, I'm having a party in my house. This, that's what a house party is all about. We've had a party now for two and a half weeks in our house. It's a two and a uh -huh. half week long nonstop party. Uh, there are lots of video games being played by my teenage sons. There's Classic. also the school happening because, you know, they're doing school on their laptops every day. And hey, uh, I'm, as long as that's still happening, that's that's a good sign. That's true. That's true. <laughs> so I'm glad to bring the South Carolina house party to the Juice house party. 
There you go. The 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 good the good southern draw. Come on. Oh, yeah, yeah. I am a I am a southern boy. If you've never visited South Carolina, I would highly recommend. The cost of living is cheap. The weather's nice. And we've got good college football. Hey, there you go. I mean, it's it's on my bucket list to go there. I mean, although right now uh, out in uh, Orange County, LA, there's there's no traffic, so that's like the one good thing about uh, everything that's happening right now. But uh, it's probably going to change uh, real soon. Yeah. But, <laughs> kind of like a ghost town here, too. I went to uh, the post office the other day to mail a package, and, man, it felt like the walking dead. I kept wondering, where are all the cars? Oh, my gosh. I went to I went to Costco two weeks ago, right when everything started, and it was the eeriest experience of my life. I was in there. I mean, it was kind of packed, but everybody's quiet. Nobody's giving, like, any eye contact. That Everybody's looking at each other like they're you know, some sort of a zombie and they're going to get infected. So it was uh, just the weirdest experience that I've ever had. And what a strange time to be alive, right? <laughs> exactly. So has, uh, has anything, has anything crazy happened at your house? I know you have two teenage sons. I do have two teenage sons and a dog. And in dog years, this dog would also be a teenager. As a matter of fact, I'll introduce you to our dog. His name is Theo. My son Jacob's going to hand him to me right now. I hope that he doesn't uh, go crazy. He's a pretty docile dog. Uh, <laughs> this is Theo. Hello, Theo. Hi, Say Theo. Hello to the friends. Oh, uh, my is, goodness. That's our teenage dog. He's like two years old. Uh, but, yeah, we've had, some, we've had some strange things happening. You know, when, when teenagers get, get stuck at home, they – they figure out and create ways to have fun. And if they are boys, those ways are not fun unless they carry the risk of bodily harm. So, Absolutely. you know, my boys are both six feet tall. They both love basketball and they can't watch basketball because there is no basketball because of, you know, COVID-19. They can't play basketball because their seasons have been canceled. So they decided to play basketball in our driveway, which that's cool because we have a basketball goal. What's really strange is I go outside and I see, well, he's right here. Uh, Jacob, come come here. This is my 17-year-old son, Jacob. He was playing basketball with my 14-year-old son. Jacob, say hello to all of our hey house there. party friends. Hello there. So this kid, I'm, I'm outing him on, uh, on, on the internet right now. He and his friends stole grocery carts. Where did you get them from? I forget. Was it like Home Depot? No, uh, one from Walmart and one from Lowe's. Oh, those are the sturdiest. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Exactly. Best quality. So they decide that they're going to take these, these, go these, not golf carts, these grocery carts, which aren't being used. I think they may have been trash anyway. They brought them to our house. I walk outside and my 14 year old is standing up inside a grocery cart under the basketball goal. Oh, this kid, Jacob, is trying to dunk on an eight foot goal. And my other son's trying to block him while he's standing up in a grocery cart. No brakes, no safety precautions. It's a miracle we didn't have to go to the hospital for a broken head. Well, real, real question, though. Did you, did you make the dunk at least? Um, a couple of them, yeah. Okay, there you go. Is 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 it on TikTok? Is it on? Is it on the web anywhere? I I like to watch TikTok. I don't make TikTok. Okay, hey, that's that's all right. That's all right. Well, Clayton, we're so excited to have you on, and uh, you know, w w tell us a little about. You're going to be speaking later um, tonight, so tell us a little bit about kind of what's what's on your heart and what uh, what you're hoping to kind of share with everyone tonight. Yeah, you know, I was uh, I was so excited to be able to just give a quick word of encouragement. This is just a strange time, and what I'm going to be talking about in a, in a little while is how it's not wrong to feel the emotions that we're all going through right now. You know, it's kind of, you hear that school's going to be canceled and you get excited. You're going to get to sleep late. You're going to get to stay up late. But after a couple of weeks, you don't get to see your friends. You can't go to ball games. You can't go to concerts. You can't even go over to their house. And so there's a lot of anxiety. There's a lot of uh, isolation. I think a lot of folks are really discouraged right now. So I'm going to be sharing a word uh, from the Gospels about how it's okay for us to feel those things, but we also hold on to the hope that we have in Jesus Christ, knowing that our God is a God of resurrection. And even though hard times will come, they won't stay hard forever. There's a better day. It's right around the corner. And when we come out on the other side of this, we'll have a better revelation of who God truly is because he's made us promises and he's going to keep those promises in Scripture. Amen. Amen. Well, we're very much looking forward to it, Clayton. So we will talk to you later tonight. Yeah, thanks for having me. 
What's up, everyone? Pastor Josh here. Shout out to Rose Drive Friends Church in your Belinda, California. JJ just ran off to interview Phil Joel, one of his idols from Newsboys United and Zealand Worship. Let's check in. Well, Phil Joel, amazing. Thank you so much for joining us on the Juice House Party. How you doing? I'm great. Thanks for having me. You know, I've got a tight schedule, but I managed to fit you in, so that's good, you know? Perfect, perfect. All the, all the touring, all the craziness, you know? Uh, I, mean, I, I lost my job, guys, so, you know, I've got nothing else to do. <laughs> I guess I'll hop onto the Juice House Party. All right, all right. So, so Phil, what, uh, you know, how are you guys, you and your family, spending your quarantine? How does a, a day in the life of Phil Joel and his family look like right now? day in the life of Phil Joel? Oh, well, I've got to be honest with you. I'm kind of sleeping in a little bit later than normal right now. Is everyone doing that? I, I, you know, I was, I was for a bit, and then I started to feel like guilty about it. And then so I was like, okay, no, I got to set my alarm earlier. And then I kind of let the alarm, you know, I hit the snooze button a few times. So I'm kind of back in the not feeling really? guilty. Oh, good for you. Okay, well, that, that inspires me to get, get up a little bit earlier again. Because I've, I've been an early riser historically. But lately, I've just been sleeping into like, you know, like, seven, well, 7.30. It's a big sleep in for around here. Yeah. And, um, yeah. Sleep in, and I get up, and I get a juice. Look at that. Juice. Oh, my gosh. Usually, usually those are green. I mean, that looks like just kind of brown sludge, but I'm sure it tastes good. Mm, it's really good. Actually, no, it tastes like dirt, but it's really good for me. That's good. Good for you. Um, so are you, are you staying creative in this time? Are you writing? Very much so. I, um, I've got a little studio space behind the house. So that's where I, I have all my guitars and gear and, and all that stuff. And um, so I, you know, I get up and running and then head out to my studio and try and fight the war of art, you know, try and make music. And um, yeah, it's been going good. It's been going pretty well. I mean, uh, it's, yeah, I usually like to surround myself with a lot of people who are more talented than me in the studio, <laughs> but I can't. You know, it's just me. So uh, it's 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 fun though. It's been good. Yeah. That's good. And are and are you writing right now? Are you writing more for for Zealand? Uh, kind of just some of your just own stuff, or a little of every everything? Uh, you know what? I'm I've I've been writing for the last couple of years for I've I've it's time for me to make a new solo record. I haven't made a solo record in a long time mm -hmm. and um so i've got things i want to say you know that i think are, are kind of new and a little um a little different for me and maybe even for the genre if you want to call it and so um that's what i'm trying to record and work on yeah that's great i love that well uh you know for a lot of us and i'm and i'm sure that you can relate to this phil it, you know our life is go 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 and there's so many things that you know are pulling for our for our attention you know, in culture, culture will say that our identity is found uh, in, in the things that we bring to the table, how many likes we get, how many followers we have, whatever the list goes on and on. And, uh, you know, even right now, it's such a weird time in our world to be able to stop and, and stay home. And, you know, that can, be, that can be hard, but there can also be some really good that can come from it. You know, we can easily let ourselves get sucked in by social media, by Netflix, you know, or we can take some time to, to do some, some work on ourselves and on our souls. And, you know, one of the reasons that we wanted to talk to you specifically is, you know, about a year ago now, you wrote a book, um, and, and it talks uh, it talks a lot about this, and it speaks to how we can find hope in crazy situations in life. And uh, in the book, you talk about, you know, what it is we all want, what it is we all need, but we tend to search for that in the wrong ways. And you know, what was the catalyst? Was there a catalyst or something that spurred you to write this? You know, was it something that you observed in culture, or did it just kind of come to you? Well, like you say, I mean, we all want to be seen, we all want to be understood, and we all want to be loved, you know, yeah. or liked, you know. Oh, yeah. it's like this, you know. Do they like me? Um, so we all want to be seen, understood, and loved. And oftentimes we go to places that promise that, but just don't deliver. They mm -hmm. really don't deliver. We keep going back, hoping that we'll find some sort of, you know that will we'll, we'll breathe a little less shallow. Maybe it'll, it'll give us something, some sort of a sense of identity, of satisfaction, of significance, of meaning, and it just never does. It's never enough. Um, and uh, anyway, I wrote a book talking about that, but it, it, it began, um, you told me you read it though, right? 
I did. I, I, I loved it. And I, and, I, and I think that every student, every, every leader should, should read this because it's such a, such a timely me message. And it was just so refreshing. And I felt myself as I was reading it, I was like, oh, man, that's so simple, but that's so good. Good. Yeah. It's a pretty easy read. You know, I, I wrote it. I mean, I'm not a real, you know, I'm not some kind of, you know, super educated theologian or whatever. I'm just some, I'm just a guy, you know, who plays music in a, in a rock and roll band from the other side of the world. And, um, but I, you know, I feel like I've learned a few things over the years. And, and so I wrote a few of them down. Um, yeah, I wrote a book about it all. <laughs> yeah. So amazing, Redwoods and Whales. I, I've gosh, such such an encouraging book, and I know it just it just really uplifted my soul. And so, uh, students, make sure you guys check this out. Leaders, check it out. It is absolutely amazing. Yeah, it's um, an easy read too, JJ. Right? I mean, it's like really it's like is a book for dummies. I mean, I I, I read it. I read it so far. I couldn't put it down. I was just keeping going, keeping going, keeping going. So I did the audio book too, and the audio book is only two two hours and fifteen minutes. Which, if you can read fairly fast. You can read it in, in a couple of hours easy, you know. That's easy. And and plus, you know, people spend way more than two hours and 15 minutes on Netflix. Pause on Netflix. Listen to Redwoods and Whales. It's easy. Come on. Yeah. <laughs> enough, enough Tiger King. Come on. Yeah, no more Tiger King. Joe Exotic's got enough of everybody's attention. Come on. Okay. <laughs> well, uh, we would be foolish to have uh, Phil Joel with us and not ask him to sing us a song. So, Phil, do you have, do you have a song for us? Just so happens I have a guitar. You do? You, you willing to, uh, to uh, step up to the microphone? Um, yeah. <laughs> I'm sorry, that's, that's, that's the cheesiest yeah. joke. Um, Low-lying fruit. Low-lying fruit. Um, well, you know, I mentioned that I've been working on new music. Mm -hmm. And um, so I wrote the song. I actually, before this whole coronavirus thing happened, you know, I, I my, you know, I'm from New Zealand. And my heart, you know, got really broken about, you know, about a year ago when some terrible tragedy, a terrible, some terrible stuff happened down there. And, you know, sometimes when the bad stuff happens, uh, we as, as human beings in, in, in the communities kind of start to come together, you know, and, and realize, yeah. man, we, we're all in this together. And, we're, and um, funny thing is, as I've watched the news, I, I think I've heard that saying so many times, we're all in this together. Right. And we are. We've got to look out for each other, and we've got to take care of our neighbors. Right now, taking care of our neighbors is staying away from them. You know. Yeah, exactly. But, but anyway, I wrote this song um, called. Uh, I'm not exactly sure what I'm going to call it yet, JJ. But maybe you can tell me. But um, I think it. I think it's pertinent for now. So let's give it a shot. All right. Everybody wants to be a part of something bigger. Exception, my dear. And everybody wants to live a life beyond themselves. We all know deep down we're all connected somehow. Cause we're all in this together. Yeah. There's got to be a way for us to 
Oh my gosh. That's amazing. Never played it before. I've never played it for anyone. So there it is. Oh, oh my goodness. It. Jeez, that gave me chills, that bridge. Whew. Oh, cool. I love that. Thank you so much, Phil. So, so good. Well, hey, uh, we got to do a would you rather question with Ooh. you. Yeah. All right. So, Phil Joel, would you rather cut your hair or never do anything with music again? <gasps> oh, my goodness. What are you doing to me? Oh. That's the hardest one. Ah, uh, uh, would I rather, oh, I'd cut my hair. Yeah, I'm actually looking forward to that one day. I look like you, JJ, and you're a handsome fella. There you go. <laughs> well, the, but your hair's so iconic. Uh, yeah. <laughs> it's all right. It's just hair. It'll grow back someday. <laughs> yeah, right. It's just keratin protein. <laughs> Amazing. So, Phil, do you, have a, uh, do you have a quarantine tip, quarantine hack, you know, some way to kind of maybe pass the time? Quarantine tip, quarantine hack, um, you know, always lots of water, Mountain Valley sparkling, I highly recommend yep. that. Purell, of course. <laughs> yes, lots of Purell. Uh, and then, of course, <laughs> Pocket Gallagher. Yes. <laughs> Pocket oh, Gallagher. Gallagher, hours of fun. And what's your, what's your high score? I think my high score's in around the 200s, which ain't too shabby for an old boy, you know? That is not too shabby. I uh, would, I'm, I'm not good at video games, so uh, I, yeah, I would probably get like 10. Cool. Well, hey, good hanging with you, man, but um, I've got a game to play. <laughs> All right. Well, thank you so much, Phil. <laughs> All right, bro. See ya. That was a great performance, Phil Joel. Thanks so much. Now, next up, we have illusionist Brady Lee. I've never been an illusionist myself, but I somehow tricked my haughty husband into marrying me. Let's see what you got, Brady. Well, Brady Lee, thank you so much for hopping on to the Juice House Party. How are you, my friend? Oh, I am really happy right now. I'm doing well. I uh, just went to Trader Joe's this morning and got some good food, so nice. grateful for that. Were you able to find everything that you wanted? You know, I got there an hour earlier, and um, so it was just me, my friend, and the senior citizens. Okay. And um, they don't always do this, but uh, they, they, like, opened the doors early and allowed me and my friend to go in with them, uh, with the, the people over 60. So that was amazing. And um, they said, don't, you know, don't plan on this every time. But So we got yeah. to go in there before it even opened, and it was awesome. Exclusive Trader Joe's trip. It's so crazy. Uh, what two weeks ago, like when this all like kind of started, I went to Trader Joe's, and I've I have never. It is just the weirdest experience seeing grocery stores empty, and it's like everything is empty. It is the strangest feeling, you know. It's it's just the strangest thing in the world. But uh, shout out to all of you who are working in the grocery stores right now. Like you guys are are killing it, true heroes. And so thank you for what you're doing. Um, but uh, so Brady, how are you staying? Um, how are you staying sane during this uh, kind of lockdown time? You know, just being at home. Absolutely. Yeah, I've really been enjoying going on walks uh, right around the neighborhood, and I love it. Some kids just like make these chalk drawings and messages on the ground. Like they say things like "spread kindness, not germs," and mm -hmm. like "God loves you." Have a great day. And I've just been so touched as I go on my walks seeing these little chalk drawings. I love that. Yeah, and, and like the hopscotch. It's like I haven't played hopscotch in forever, but every time I see one, I feel like I have to, I have to do it. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. <laughs> That's awesome. Has, uh, has anything, uh, anything like kind of fun or crazy happened like for you or your roommates during this time? Yeah, let's see. Well, I've been, uh, yeah, I've just been getting to film different videos outside uh, in my neighborhood and and get to use my talent to share the gospel. And one time, um, one of my neighbors happened to be listening, and I had no idea, but they were watching, the, they're yeah, seeing me do my talent and, and hearing me share the gospel. And after we were, we were done recording, they, they just were so encouraging and said, wow, thank you so much for sharing that. Like, keep doing what you're doing. And if you guys need anything, please come on over. And I had never met this neighbor before, and so it was just so cool to know that they were another believer and that they were touched. Yeah, that's awesome, man. And so how long, how long have you been doing magic now? 
I've been doing magic for about 16 years. Oh my goodness. And what, what got you into it? What was like the, the, what made you be like, I want to do that? So my dad is a dentist and, you know, people don't really like to go to the dentist office. My dad does magic tricks to his patients. And so he brightens their day and puts a smile on their face so they're at ease. So growing up, I would see him do his stuff and I was just so intrigued. And so he was actually the first one to teach me magic when I was a little kid. That's so cool. All right. Well, uh, you know, at, with that, why don't, you, why don't you take it away? Why don't you, why don't you show us some tricks? Absolutely. Yeah. Well, this morning at the grocery store, I actually want to show you how I, I paid this morning. I have one, two, three, four dollars. And obviously, um, it wasn't enough to, to buy everything that I needed. I had a big old cart full of stuff. But watch the four dollar bills. If I just take them like this, and I fold them up. Check it out. You'll actually be able to see the ones. Oh my gosh. Into 20s. So that's 20, 40, 60, 80 bucks. And so that was so fun to do to the uh, the person at the checkout. She freaked out and we had a good time. But let me show you what I what I got here. Um, I actually got some Oreos. Okay. Let me show you here we have. Double stuffed Oreos. Yeah, double stuffed Oreos. Classic. And uh, I have one more thing inside the bag because, JJ, do you know what goes really well with Oreos? Uh, I'm, I'm just milk. No, yeah, that's actually uh, exactly what I'm talking about. We have a glass oh my gosh. of milk right here. Oh and we don't need the bag anymore, but um, I want to show you some magic with uh, milk and Oreos. What on earth is happening right now? Let's, uh, let's take one of the, the Oreos here and, uh, and watch. Should we just give it a little... Dunk. Check it out. Mm. <laughs> oh um, my god! I'll try one more thing with an Oreo here. Uh, if I if I just take it, open it up, and take the stuffing. Mm. I love the cream. That's the best part. Mm -hmm. And sometimes uh, I'll just I'll take the uh, the Oreo like this and just give it a little blow. Watch. Oh my god! <laughs> can actually refill like the Oreo, so it's pretty fun. Oh my goodness! Mm -hmm. Let me show you something else here with uh, a coin. I'm gonna make a coin disappear. Check it out. If I take it, I'm going to place it in my hand. All you have to do is count to three, JJ, okay? Do you see the coin? I can see the coin. Okay, just count to three. One, two, three. Just like that, it completely <laughs> disappears, okay? And if we just kind of wave, watch carefully, we just kind of wave my hands, you can make it reappear. Oh my gosh. Like now, I want to teach you how it's done. For everyone watching, it's your lucky day. I'm going to reveal the Oh my the gosh, secret. a magician is going to reveal his secrets, everybody. I know. I'm oh breaking no. Myself. Don't tell anyone else. But if I place the coin in my hand like that, uh, it's going to disappear on the count of three, but you'll actually see the magic happen in slow motion. Watch. One, two, three. In slow motion. <laughs> coin completely disappear. Oh my gosh. That's how, that's how it's done. So wow. can shake friends and family. Um, <laughs> let me have something in my mouth here from the Oreos. <coughs> uh, we've got a pack of cards here, a pack of playing cards. I'm going to shuffle these guys up just like so. And JJ, do me a favor and uh, say the word stop anytime. Stop. Awesome. Uh, remember this card? Okay. 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 I'm going to lose the card inside the deck, just like this. Give it a nice little shuffle. And 
I'll be honest, there's been a lot recently that has caused me <clears throat> to feel anxious. Uh, a lot that's caused me to feel like I'm being um, kind of tossed to and fro by the waves of life going up and down, you know. Am I going to get sick? Uh, is my family going to be okay? Am I going to have enough money? All these different things that make me ang uh, feel anxious. And you see cards up, down, back and forth. Um, but I'm so thankful that the Bible says that um, I can trust in the Lord with all my heart, lean not on my understanding, but in all my ways acknowledge him, and he will make my path straight. So every single card goes back to normal. Oh, my gosh. Oh, my and gosh. <laughs> And so, man, when I am feeling anxious, I feel like God's inviting me to, you know, prayer isn't a place to be good. It's a place to be honest, where I can just come to him and honestly tell him what I'm feeling. And um, I heard uh, someone say recently, the best definition for anxiety is this. Anxiety is imagining the future without Jesus in it. Hmm. Anxiety is imagining the future without Jesus in it. I'm so thankful that Jesus is in my future, um, that he doesn't just know what's going to happen tomorrow. He's already there, and he promises to hold me and care for me. So no matter what happens, no matter what storm may come, I know that he's going to hold me fast. And so that's been really helpful as I begin to worry about things, just to remember to trust him in that way. Well, Brady, my mind is uh, officially blown, uh, as, as always, anytime that you show magic. So, dude, thank you so much for coming on to the Juice House Party. You're one of my all-time favorite people on this planet. So thank you, thank you, thank you. Uh, hope that you stay safe. Hope that you stay healthy. Hope that you stay sane. Thanks for coming on. Thanks, JJ. You're awesome, man. Oh. <laughs> and one more for the road. <laughs> thank you, Brady. See you later. Yeah. Kenny Hills Friends Church, what's up? Shout out to the youth um, from Yorba Linda, California. Hey, what's going on, everybody? It's your man, Jay Fence. Um, I just want to thank you for letting me be a part of this house party. Shout out to Juice TV. My piece is called Elevate. Um, in this time where people don't know what to do and they have so much time on their hands, it could be an opportunity to get closer to God and maybe talk to him a little bit more. Um, so let's not waste time. It's time to elevate. It's time to elevate. I came to spread the faith and the message about love that you can never replicate. Cause when you get through heaven's gates is when you get to celebrate the goal is paradise and everything else is second place. So just remember, never let nothing separate or segregate you from the greatest promise. He would never break. It's time to rededicate. We've all been led astray. Mistakes of yesterday can easily be made correct today. And please don't stress the hate. If you want it X the way, don't hesitate to let the Father step in there and set it straight. Because no matter how long your blessings take, it's never late. Don't let delay cause you to underestimate his epic grace. Who else you know was crucified, died? Then the day after the second day, left the grave, arose, and then levitated to heaven to set a place where we can live forever. Where the streets are paved with treasure and even better, the weather's great. <laughs> Get on the right side and accelerate. And let the Savior take the wheel and never let the devil press your brake. Because Satan's just a snake whose main objective is to just deflate the air out of your faith and watch you suffocate and place you in a state where only Jesus could resuscitate and wash your sins away and destroy every trace. So just in case you hold excessive weight, Call out his name, leap into his blessed embrace where you'll feel just as safe. I really hope this message resonates. See, I'm just trying to press the issue to get you to your progressive place because your success awaits. Your better days are just ahead if you are willing to be led by his majestic ways because we are just as clay. Yes, yeah, cliche, but to dust we will return when we die after our flesh decays. If that upsets you, there's a best case choice for your soul's final destination resting place. So just get saved. <laughs> Once again, it's your man, Jay Fence. Man, I thank you. I thank you. I thank you. Um, I hope that blesses you. Um, I hope you're staying safe. Hope everything's going well with your family. We will get through this, but let's take this time to elevate. Thank you again. 
All right, it's time for another game with some youth pastors. For this next game, Rachel is going to show two youth pastors a clip from On Ice, where I ask the guest a potentially uncomfortable question. In the clip, if they answer the question, I get a slushie dumped on my head. But if they don't answer or run out of time, they get the slushie dumped on their head. It's freezing and it's terrible. Uh, the youth pastor will have to guess who gets slushied. Uh, they will receive one point for each correct answer and whoever has the most points at the end wins. Hey, feel free to play along in the comment section. We would love to see if you can get this right as well. Rachel, let's get to it. Ooh, all right, so you guys have already been prepped on the rules, so let's get to know you guys a little bit. My name is Jono Mullen. My real name is not Jono, but don't tell my students that. Uh, I am the youth pastor at Rock Harbor in Mission Bay Home. Awesome. And my name is Nick Turner. I am the youth pastor at Oak Chapel in Mosa Peak. Yay! Well, we're so happy to have you guys here. Let's go to round one. First question that okay. I'm going to ask you: uh, What color underwear are you wearing? Ooh. Who do you guys think it's going to be, JJ or Robert? Robert's getting nice. No way he's answering that. Yeah? No, that's too personal. That's such an easy question to ask. I feel like that's that's such a question. JJ's getting slushed for sure. OK, nope. votes are in. Let's see what happens. Uh, I'm not wearing underwear. I have on a swimsuit. Oh, God. <laughs> oh, I was really hoping that one would get you. Take it. Oh, oh I wish it was more liquid because the fact that it's so slow. Oh my gosh. <laughs> my question, second question, and when was the last time you peed in a pool? Okay, let's go to question two. When JJ. Was... Nick, what do yeah, you think? Come on, Nick. I think JJ is going to get slushed because I feel like that's, that's, that's another one of those easy questions. I would feel way comfortable answer. Yeah? Do you know the last yeah. time you peed in a pool? Oh, like uh, I was at the time and date? Um, Six months ago? Uh, okay, okay, let's see what happens. That's not a pool! I don't know! No, I don't that's know! That's an ocean. Uh, that's uh, ocean. Uh, the ocean does not count as a pool. Everybody pees in the ocean. We all know that. Uh -uh. No. Okay, next Instagram question. You, uh, Heather or JJ? Which one do you like better? Uh, I think the girl's gonna get ice. That's She's not gonna be mean, no way. No, Nick, mm, you're gonna call it. Yeah, I think I think I think JJ's gonna get. I think he's gonna about to drop a huge bomb right here. Yes, let's get slushy on JJ. Let's see what happens. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So <laughs> yeah. the Bible yeah, says how could that, you uh, answer you that about your temple, sibling? Right? Yeah. Do you manscape? All right, this one's pretty personal. Who's gonna get it, Nico? <laughs> JJ, he deserves it. Yeah, JJ. Uh, no, I think the other guy. Yeah? I don't think he's going to answer. He's going to answer? Yes, I do! Oh, oh, let's see. Wow. Yes, I do. Oh, I love when I take a picture of that and one. JJ gets it. Oh, yes. And I'm proud of it. You did say you were an open book, so yeah. you are, uh, you're a pastor. Next question. Yes, got that question right. What's, uh, <laughs> that's not it. Okay. What's John 1135? Do you guys There's know no that? Way. As a youth pastor, no do you guys know John 1135? What yeah. about, do you know the shortest uh, verse in the Bible? Oh, it's Jesus wept. Jesus isn't it? wept. There There's no go. way he knows it. No? There's no way he yeah, knows I, it. Yeah, I agree. You he's, think JJ's getting? Mr. Youth Pastor is getting slushy. Okay, let's yeah. check it out. Unless he's very youth faster than us. Um, it's yeah. a book in the Bible. Yeah. No? What? Oh, it's actually a verse <laughs> in the Bible. And Jesus oh. just wept that you didn't know that answer, <laughs> Brian. Nope. Wow. <laughs> Last question. All right, next question. Who's going to get slushied? Uh, I think she's going to JJ. JJ? Yeah, I think, you both vote JJ. JJ. All right, let's see. <laughs> I have nothing to compare it to. Come All on, right. I can't answer that one. All right, she answered it. That's good. All right, right. She answered, even though she had nothing to compare it to. We have been keeping score, and we know who the winner right. is. <laughs> And the winner is Jono. So you get to ask all of the people who are online right now to plea for what prize you should get. Should you be getting the Nintendo Switch, the sports package, or the mystery box? So get people to comment below which one you and your youth group deserve. 
Okay, here's the thing. Yeah. I have a bunch of theater students, so cut the sports one if you okay. if you could do me a favor there. I'm a sports guy, but it's, it's not about me. Um, please, I would love the Nintendo Switch. I also know a couple guys who I would I would give it to, or I, I would pull a name out of the hat. So that would bless them. Mm -hmm. um, but if you do mystery box, you know I'm cool with that too. Honestly, if I was voting, that's what I would vote for. But if you're gonna listen to me, the stranger you've never met, Nintendo Switch. All right, you guys heard him. You heard him cry. Leave your comments below on which which prize you think he should win. And Nick, thanks to you guys. There, man. Thanks for playing. This was a great game. Hey everybody! Shout out to Harvest Youth from Harvest Springs Community Church here in Great Falls, Montana. Juice TV family, what's going on? Hey, it's Pastor Tommy Urban D. Colonin from Crossover Church down in Tampa, Florida. Yeah. And hey, you know what? Just a month ago, none of us would have ever imagined the reality we're living right now, right? The world has totally been flipped upside down. I mean, we realize now how fragile things are. And you know what, though? A lot of people out there, they don't have the hope that a lot of us have that are watching this right now. We have a relationship with Jesus. So we know that God's got us. We're going to get through this. God's going to take care of everything. Like the scripture promises, all things are going to work together for the good. So God's going to bring some good out of it. I've already seen a lot of good that's come out of it, even though there's been a lot of difficulty. So anytime that there is a problem, there's also opportunity. So there's opportunities because people are more open to God uh, now than they ever have been in a long time. And so it's our opportunity now to love our neighbor in huge, huge ways. And I know that maybe you can't physically hang out with your neighbor, but maybe you're gonna call them or text them or email them or FaceTime them or Zoom call them, or maybe you will knock on the door and bring them some groceries, but keep your six feet distance, right? Uh, but find ways to serve your neighbor and love your neighbor. So I, I, I wanna show you guys my latest spoken word video that's called, Will You Be? my neighbor it's got a little mr rogers flavor to it and you know what god wants to use you he wants to use me to reach people that are very different than us and he can do that especially in times like this we got to let our light shine bright in this dark crisis that we're in the middle of right now so hey juice tv family i love you guys i'm praying for you guys go love your neighbor as you love yourself peace you be my neighbor It's a beautiful day in the neighborhood. Will you be my neighbor? But wait, there's some conditions. You have to line up with my neighbor rendition. So you have to line up with my position on the border wall, immigration and prison reform. See neighbor, you don't have to look like me, but you have to conform and assimilate to what I think is the norm. <laughs> and if not, I'll unfriend you. I'll block you, I'll drop you. Behind your back, you can be sure that I'll mock you. And if you do line up with my ideas, well, great. But wait, I need to check your papers, your credit score, and by the way, are you straight? Because honestly, I hate people that are different than me. I don't even talk to half the people in my family tree because they don't know how to be a good neighbor like me. Unfortunately, there's still a lot of people that flow like that. They say they want to be your neighbor, but only if you think like them, vote like them, if you're unwoke like them. But the reality is, we're all under construction. We need God's help to build with our neighbors. But what did Jesus really mean when he said we must love our neighbor as we love ourselves? Well, most people don't really know because their Bible's collecting dust up on the shelf. Well, in Luke chapter 10, Jesus answers the question. He was asked, who is my neighbor? There's a powerful lesson. His culture, like ours, was full of discrimination. People also decided who was their neighbor by process of elimination. 
So he told this parable of this Samaritan that was despised and how two religious leaders walked by and basically compromised. He revised this Samaritan's title to good because he stopped and helped this beat up Jew like a true neighbor would. Even though their people had beef. And if that Jew wasn't hurt, he might have actually given that Samaritan grief. So we can learn that no matter their lifestyle, politics, or skin color, we can show our neighbor the love of Christ as a sister or a brother. So let's love our neighbor as we love ourselves. Well, earlier in the show, Rachel and I, we tried our hand at some jokes. Were they funny? I don't know, the jury's still out on that. But we brought in a professional, he's a friend of Juice. Please welcome comedian Nazareth. Well, hello, it's great to be here with you guys at this party. I am from the Middle East, but ever since September 11th, I feel so Mexican. <laughs> uh, I love it, I was born in Israel, and it's a family tradition to name you after the city you're born in, so they named me Nazareth. I feel sorry for my brother Waikiki, my other brother Albuquerque, and my sister Buffalo. I love doing uh, Juice TV and coming to TVN, but you know what? The other day I had this pastor, he was praying for me. I, I think he was an 80s DJ. Because when he started praying, I couldn't stop him. He was like, Lord, how sweet it is to be loved by you. Lord, be with Nazareth. Every breath he takes, every move he makes, be with him. If he has the sniffles or the night fever, night fever. Let him know he will survive. And if Kiki doesn't love him, you still do. And if Satan ever comes his way, let him beat it. Just beat it in Jesus' name. I'm like, thanks, buddy. But I was, I love, I was born in Israel. I've been in California for 35 years. I love California, people. This is the greatest state. I love California because we're a melting pot. Like my African-American friends, they call me dog. Hey, dog. How are you, dog? My Latino friends call me Ese. Hey, Ese. How are you, Ese? My Caucasian friends call me buddy. Hey, buddy. How are you, buddy? My Middle Eastern friends call me infidel. And my Indian friends called me every day to tell me I owe the IRS money. But I love, you know, I, I love it. You know what? There's no political correctness when you love someone. Like my neighbor, Tony, he's black. If I call him African-American, he gets mad. You know what? I love this man. Every time I need anything, I go to him. The other day, I went to Tony. I said, Tony, I need to borrow one of those long screwdrivers with the Phillips. He goes, what are you, making a bomb again? <laughs> I'll go, you'll be the first to know in 10 Nine, eight, but don't worry, I got him back. You know, like a week later, the Jehovah Witnesses knocked on my door, and for the first time, I opened. I'm like, oh, I'm so glad you're here. My friend Tony was asking me, he wanted some faith in his life, and I just saw him pull in. He's home, and he's hard of hearing, so keep knocking. A week later, the solar guy comes to my house. He goes, your neighbor said you wanted to save 50% on your electric bill. But see, it's okay. When you love someone, it's okay to joke with them. And, um, you know, this whole coronavirus thing is really getting to me because I love to hug people. And, you know, it started with a handshake, then the fist bump, now with the elbow pump. What is that about? I don't know how to deal with it. That's not loving someone. What do you do? When you pump someone, do you look them in the eyes? Do you go over their elbow or under, depending on their age? And how do you compliment them? Like, oh, I love your 45-degree angle here. Hey, Nice. I like this pointy, uh, you know, elbow. Oh, nice weenus. What, what, do, you, what do you tell people? I, I don't know. But, it, but this is what I think. I think with this whole thing going with the coronavirus, it's showing how generous Americans are. We are so generous. You know what? Americans even donate their body parts. Can you believe that? In third world countries, they sell their body parts. I'm serious, can you imagine doing it here? Where would you sell it, Amazon? Like people who bought this gallbladder bought a kidney too. I mean, what would be the names of the places that will sell it? Like Head and Shoulders, 
Eye to eye. <laughs> Build a body. <laughs> Chief auto body. Uh, the slim limbs. The bladder brothers. <laughs> the gland stand. Bed, bath, and bowels. <laughs> I don't know. I just, I just think it's, it's so funny, but... Uh, I have to tell you, you know what, uh, I'm ADD, people always say think outside of the box, I can't even find the box. But uh, I, I love uh, living in America because we have choice. Everywhere I go, I have my choice. I went to buy some groceries, they said, you paper or plastic? Choice. Went to get some coffee, said regular or decaf? Choice. Got out of the airport, this guy with a gun, he said, give me your wallet or I'll shoot you. Choice. But you know what bothers me also about this whole, this whole distancing thing? It's like I can't go to a Starbucks. I can go to the drive-thru, but that's not the same. I love going to Starbucks because I learn geography from Starbucks. You look at those coffees, now you learn about countries. You know, like the other day I met a guy, I go, where are you from? He goes, I'm from Sumatra. I go, wow, what region, the regular or the decaf? But uh, anyway, so... Uh, I, I'm married, I have three kids. My daughter's, you know, last year she was 18 years and she had some like anxiety issues. Like one time we got up at three in the morning and she walked from her room to our room and just dropped. Uh, praise God, it was, uh, what do you call it? It was dehydration at the time. And we were scared, we called 911. And man, they were there in like two seconds. They're knocking on the door. My wife goes, you're not going to open the door like that. Look at you. Look at you. You got to, you know, put something on. Come on. Tidy up the house. So, I, you know, we did that. And I opened the door and came this big, big, what do you call them? The firefighters. Oh, man, I got intimidated. The guy goes, what's her science? Oh, she's a Capricorn. She's a 5.0 GPA student. <laughs> you know, doesn't date anybody. And then, they, and then the paramedics came in, and the paramedic guy was like looking at her, and he looks at me and her mom. He goes, what have you guys done different in the last 24 hours? I said, we took her phone away. She said she would die, but we didn't believe her. Because she's a teenager. You need to keep the phone attached to her and charged at all times. But I got to tell you guys, you know what? Maybe a lot of you are scared because of what's going on. But if you're a Christian, this is the time to rejoice because we know who's in charge. And this is our time to get in the game, ladies and gentlemen. I'm Nazareth. Thank you so much. And God bless you. Hello, my name is Josh. I work in the high school department at Fullerton Free in Fullerton, California. I love my students. All right, in this final game of the night, I'm gonna be giving three youth pastors a quote. Their job is to tell us if the quote was said by Donald Trump or Michael Scott. If they get the answer right, they get a point. The youth pastor with the most points at the end of the game will win. Also, play along with us in the comments section. Test your knowledge of the words of Trump and Scott. All right, so here we go. Let's meet our contestants right now. Hey everybody, uh, my name is Jamie. I'm a youth pastor in Harbor Trinity Church in Costa Mesa, Orange County. What's going on guys? My name is Alec and I am the youth pastor at Canyon Hills Friends Church in Yorba Linda, California. Hello, my name is Josh. I work in Fullerton at Fullerton Free in the uh, state of California. Hey students. All right. Are you guys ready? You guys know Donald Trump and Michael Scott quotes? You think you got it? All of them. We'll, uh -huh. we'll see. All right, here we go. Let me read you your first quote. Your first quote is, I love the old days, you know? You know what I hate? There's a guy, totally disruptive, throwing punches. We're not allowed to punch back anymore. I'd like to punch him in the face, I'll tell you. Who said that? Donald Trump or Michael Scott? Uh, Donald Trump. I'm going to go with Donald Trump as well. Josh? I'm also going with Trump, but it's not because I'm copying. I just think it's him. <laughs> all right. Well, you guys are all correct. Everybody's getting a point. It is Woo! Donald Trump. I all right. Him. So here we go. Moving on to your next question. Or your next. Okay. Moving on to your next quote. It's always good to be underestimated. What do you think? <laughs> uh, I'm going to go with Michael Scott in that one. I am too. I saw the episode the other day. Josh? Yeah, it's Michael Scott as well. That's what I believe. You guys sure? <laughs> I'm sure. Well, you're all incorrect because that's Donald Trump. <laughs> oh, <laughs> you're kidding me. 
Michael Scott no does way. say something similar, but it is not that exact quote. Okay, here we go. Next uh, question. No negotiation, or sorry, next quote. I keep saying question. I'm gonna stick that in. All right, next quote. Negotiation is an art. Back and forth, give and take. What do you guys Michael think? Scott. Alec? Oh, well, Michael Scott. Josh? Okay, I want to disagree and see if I can pull ahead. I'm going to say Donald Trump. You're going to say Donald Trump. Well, the answer is Michael Scott. Michael Scott said that. So, Jamie and Alec, you are getting a point. Josh, you're falling behind. So, uh, here we go. All right, next question. <laughs> Next quote. <laughs> I'll take that again. I keep doing that. Next quote. Sometimes it makes financial sense to lose money, like for tax purposes. What do you guys think? Donald Trump. I want to say Donald Trump as well. I am getting no chances to pull even. I also <laughs> want to say Donald Trump. You don't want even to try? That's my answer. Locking in. You're locking it in. Well, you're all wrong. That is Michael Scott. <laughs> Josh, that was your ah. chance to catch back up. <laughs> all right. Trick. Okay, here Trick we question. go. <laughs> Moving on to the next one. Your next quote is, what do I know about it? All I know is what's on the internet. What do you guys think? Oh, my gosh. Let me go first. Michael Scott. Okay, Josh, oh, you go sorry. first. Go <laughs> Whatever. I'm going to say Donald Trump. Okay. Jamie, you said Michael Scott? Uh, I'll go with Michael Scott. I'll go with Michael Scott. Okay, well, the answer is Donald Trump. That's a tie. <laughs> so we're back, we're back. Well, Everybody's got eat. two. Mm -hmm. Here we go <laughs> again. All right, your next quote is, I have never seen a thin person drinking Diet Coke. What do you guys think? <laughs> <laughs> Harder. It's, uh, it's, it's harder than you think. <laughs> I, I'm going to say Michael Scott. I'm going to say Donald Trump. I'm going to go with Michael Scott. All right. With that, Jamie pulls ahead. That is Donald Trump. Oh. <laughs> okay. Here we go. Your next uh, quote sure. is, he's a good guy, not a terrorist. <laughs> what do you guys think? Michael Scott. Michael Scott. Uh, uh, Donald Trump. All right, with that, Jamie and Alec, you're getting a point. The answer is Michael Scott. All right. <laughs> Moving. <Disappointing everyone. laughs> Ooh. Moving on. Next quote. In order to get hotter, you take the glasses off. What do you guys think? Michael Scott. Okay. Michael Scott. Michael Scott. Michael Scott. Everybody's going for Michael Scott. Everybody is correct. That is a Michael Scott quote. Uh, dang. All right. Just a couple more here. Sometimes by losing a battle, you find a new way to win the war. What do you guys think? Uh, I'm going to go first because then if they copy me, then I, that's my excuse. Okay. Why I didn't, I'm going to say Donald Trump. Okay. I'm going to go with Donald Trump. See? Yeah, me too. <laughs> All right. Josh. I, they copy me if it's correct. <laughs> and it is correct. That is Donald Trump. Okay. This is why I lost if I lose. <laughs> <laughs> All right. This, uh, Rachel, what's the score? I think we're tied. <laughs> <laughs> I think I, I have a feel. I think Jamie's ahead by one. Jamie's ahead yeah, by yeah. one. All right, Jamie. If you get this one right, you win. But if you get it wrong, then we're going to have a tiebreaker. This is your last one. Why would you Dad. date an amateur when you can date a professional? What do you guys think? I'm going to say Donald Trump. I'm going to say Michael Scott. Oh, no. Josh, what do you think? Uh, I'm going to say Donald Trump, even though it doesn't matter, because I can't win anyways. <laughs> even though it doesn't matter, it does not matter, because Jamie is the winner. The answer is Michael Scott. Oh. Yeah, Jamie, right. 
Congrats. Right. That means that you have a chance to win a Switch or the sports package, or you could win the mystery bucket. Now, like I told you, you don't actually get to choose. You've got to make a plea to everybody watching right now. So, Jamie, what do you, what do you want? What do you want the people to vote for you to win? Uh, okay. I want the sports pack because, I don't know, we just don't have enough spike balls and footballs and volleyballs. So just the sports pack would be great. I have a lot of sporty kids. So for everyone who's voting, please vote for that. Um, mystery box sounds interesting too, but I'd like the sports pack. All right, so you heard him. He wants the sports package. So if you want Jamie to win that sports package, make sure that you comment right now. Write Jamie and sports package. We will be telling those up after the stream, and we will let you guys know what you win. Jamie, congratulations. Josh, Alec, thank you guys so much for playing. Valiant effort. Uh, appreciate you guys. <laughs> Josh is giving a thumbs down. Josh, I'm giving, a, I'm giving a thumbs down to you because you lost. Alec, I'm giving you a thumbs up because you good, good attitude. Just kidding. Love you guys. Thank you so much, and uh, we'll talk to you soon. They copied all my hey, guys. <laughs> Oh, okay, that was so much fun. Well, JJ just logged off with the youth pastors and is going to be patching in our next guest. I don't even know what that means. His name is Clay Finisand, and he is part of North Point Worship. They're going to be chatting, and then Clay is going to sing a song. So let's listen in. Well, Clay Finisand from North Point Worship. Dude, thank you so much for hopping on to the Juice House Party. How are you doing today? Man, I'm doing good. Today's a good day. I have a lot planned. Uh, yeah. I'm going to be sitting on my couch, and then maybe I'll stand up at some point. So it's a big day ahead. Looking maybe go to. outside. Do you have a balcony at least? No balcony. No balcony. But I do. Uh, I have a good view of my backyard. Um, oh. So sometimes I'll just look out and look at the grass, and it's very entertaining. So do you just look at the grass. You don't. You don't go step on the grass. No, never step on the grass. Okay. Hey, you know what? To each their own. Well, uh, so Clay, how have you? Uh, how has quarantine been been for you? I mean, what uh, what have you been keeping yourself busy with other than watching grass and sitting on the couch? Man, when you put it like that, it sounds like I am the most boring person of all time. Um, well, I'll, I, recently I've I've rediscovered a love of Monopoly, um, oh. and I found out that you can play it online. And so. Um, you can just, you can get it on your phone or whatever. And so I've just been playing strangers in Monopoly probably seven times a day. So oh my gosh. Actually the, the most I've done in one day so far, I think is five. Um, but Help. playing a lot of Monopoly, trying to read, um, it's funny. It's one of those things where you're always hoping, oh, when I have more time, then I'll do this. Uh -huh. And then when you actually have more time, you're like, you don't do anything that you've planned. So yeah. I'm trying to manage my time well. I think that's been the biggest challenge of, okay, I've got all this extra time on my hands now. How do I not waste it? And how do I spend this time well? Still have fun, but be wise with like yeah. an opportunity. So Clay, with, uh, so with North Point, so are you, guys, are you guys taking this time to do, to do a lot of writing? Yeah, we're doing some FaceTime, Skype writings, kind of like this, um, uh, but yeah, it's been a little tricky. For the first week or so, we, you know, while social distancing was just becoming a thing, um, we were still trying to meet in small groups, have appropriate distance, um, just to create little worship moments that we could put online, share with our church, share with our students, um, to kind of help bridge the gap of not being so alone. However, now regulations are getting a little more strict and we want to honor those and also make sure that nobody is in a situation that they feel uh, could compromise their health or the health of a loved one. So we're not meeting anymore, um, which has been a bummer. You know, yeah. they're my, we're, we're a band, but we're also best friends and, you know, family. So it's hard to not see each other all the time, but yeah, we're trying, I think actually um, today or tomorrow I'm hopping on a, on a FaceTime and we're going to try to write. So we're finding ways to keep, keep connected, but it's definitely a new little challenge to, to hurdle, but I think we're making it through and we've started a new group chat with the band where everyone's sending memes and stuff like that. So it's been lighthearted and we've been, honestly, I think we're getting closer now than we have before just because of the circumstances is, is forcing us to communicate. So it's been, um, a challenge, but a good one. 
Yeah, it's crazy how being apart can can cause people to actually come together in just this, in a different way. It's like, oh, you actually have to talk and, and make an effort to, to reach out to to connect. Well, and it's a common denominator. I mean, yesterday I went to go like pick up some food um, from a from a restaurant in uh, Chipotle, and they you know everybody's only doing takeout, and we walked in, and I ended up having a great conversation with the folks that were working there just because we already have this one thing in common, even though we don't know each other. So we ended up talking for five or five minutes or so, and it was great. So it's been, it's been interesting how total strangers are now in the same boat as, as you and I, and it's a good jumping place to have a relationship with them that you might otherwise, you know, not have. Totally. That's awesome. And I, you know, I saw that you guys, you guys just released uh, a couple songs back in February. And, yes. and I read, did I, did I see you guys are trying to write like 12 more this year or? Yeah, we're, or even we're planning on releasing, I, I believe, uh, we, originally the plan was to put out two songs, I think a month. Um, but due to we're not able to get in the studio really and the way we're tracking stuff at home and kind of sending it in. So it's slowing down the process a little bit, but I think we're trying still. Um, the last two that came out, I believe nothing else matters and, um, just getting started. And now I believe we're putting out, we're just getting the, the mix, I think today for one of our new songs. Um, and there's another song. So yeah, we're, we're working to try to get some stuff out and keep things moving, but, um, it's, it's, it may not be as many as we hope for this year, but hopefully it'll still be. A couple ones that we really believe in and have really helped us along the way too. That's awesome, man. And uh, and so you're going to do a song for us today. Yes. And uh, and what song is that? It's called Wide Open. Um, let me go ahead and grab. Uh, I'll grab my guitar and I can tell you guys a little bit uh, about the song. If that's Sounds all right. Good. Yeah. 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 This song uh, it came out a little while ago, and um, this song it is is actually one of the. So I I tried writing worship songs before and, and like in college and stuff and it always uh flopped like never went over well so i just thought you know what i'm terrible at this um i'll just write songs for just jesus to hear he can he can hear him and it'll just be between me and him and then i went through one of the first true heartaches of my life where um i had dated a girl for a long time and we broke up and at the same time, dealing with things with my family, you know, as I'm getting older and as my siblings are getting older, we're learning how to relate to our parents in a, fr in a new way um, and learn how to relate to each other in a new way. And I had just moved to this new city. I had moved to Atlanta and I still didn't really know anybody that well around North Point, the church that I'm at. I didn't know the band very well. So I was feeling really alone and really afraid of what was next for me. And um kept feeling I, I heard a friend tell me uh, as her and her husband were moving to Portland Oregon that she said um hey on the other side of all the things that we've ever been afraid of we know that God has been there and there was this basically like invitation that I I picked up what she was saying was okay if there's this wall that I perceive and I perceive I'm on this side and God's here and this wall is fear that must mean if God is everywhere, that on the other side of that wall that I perceive is going to take away God's love or keep me from his love, he must also be there too. Um, but I didn't get to experience that until I took steps of obedience myself and walked through the fear. And then I found out that those things that I was afraid of were paper thin. Um, and then also, uh, another little backstory behind this song, I was in Disney World of all places, and I was in line at the, um, I think it's a small world. And um, there was a little plaque on the, like, you know how in Disney World there's plaques everywhere as you're walking through the lines to keep you entertained. And there's just a line that said, you can't run from trouble. There's no place that far. And I was like, okay, yeah, but also if you're a believer in Jesus, David writes about this in the Psalms. Like, even if I make my bed in the depths, um, you're still there. When I wake, you're there. When I go to sleep, you're there. So just trying to live in this awareness and i'm still trying to you know every single day trying to figure it out like that if god is with me everywhere and he's on the other side of my fears then what do i what am i gaining from from living in fear and worry why don't i just walk through those things knowing that he's not only with me here he's with me then and he'll be with me on the way 
Um, and so, yeah, this was just kind of a take on what David said and then what Paul said in Romans, that there's, there's nothing that can separate us from the love of God. So, yeah, it's called Wide Open. All right, man. Awesome. I'll just play it for you guys. No height, no depth, no life or final breath could ever separate us from your love. No failure, no mistake, no loneliness or pain could ever separate us from your love. Cause on the other side, of everything I'm afraid You were standing with your arms wide open Wide open Even in my deepest doubts and wonders You were standing with your arms wide open Wide open I'm healed, made strong, yeah, I found where I belong. Forever I'm alive now in your love. Mm -hmm. I'm changed, unchained by your amazing grace. Forever I'm alive now in your love. Cause on the other side, of everything I'm afraid of, you're standing with your arms wide open, wide open, even in my deepest doubts and wonders, you're standing with your arms wide open, oh, if I make my bed in darkness, if I try my best to hide, you know the farthest ocean. You give the morning its light. I can't run from your presence, cause there's no place that far. So I run to you, my Savior. There's safety in your arms. Oh, yes. I'm safe here in your arms, oh, cause on the other side of everything I'm afraid of, you standing with your arms wide open, wide open, yes, even in my deepest doubts and wonders, you're standing with your arms wide open, wide open. Amazing. Oh, dude, thank you so much. Oh, thank you. Gosh, yeah, man, that song great. has become a really special one for our for our church. And um, it's been kind of after the fact, a sweet reminder to me, you know, that our trials, we consider them a joy. Um, because they're developing our faith and our perseverance and our endurance, and then we don't have need for anything. And it's comforting to me that trials are something that are temporary, which means that they're also a once and eternity opportunity um, to have our faith perfected and have our endurance grown um, that we're not going to get one day. Once we're in that glory, we don't have the trials anymore. So right now, it actually is something we can we can be grateful for and thank God for because it's developing us in a way that we'll never be able to after the fact. So. Yeah, it's cool to see that God has used that song, and I'm grateful that you guys let me share it. Super cool, man. Well, Clay, dude, thank you so much for jumping on to the Juice House Party. It's been great to chat with you. Thank you so much for the song. Of and course. We hope to talk to you soon. JJ, thanks for your time today, and everybody be safe. Love you guys. See you, man. All right, hello. My name is John. Uh, my parents are from the Middle East, but uh, luckily they came to America a year before I was born, so they gave me number one on American baby names. That's why my name is John. Uh, it beat Abdul Rahman. 
for me. Um, I got away with the name, but I didn't get away with some of the characteristics. Like, uh, I have a lot of body hair, you know? Like, I shaved this beard 30 minutes ago, and it's already back. And uh, the, my body hair kind of looks like the Amazon rainforest. I tried putting Nair in it the other day, and now it just looks like the Amazon rainforest after the fire. <laughs> There, there are some things in the Arab culture, though, that I wish like came to America, like arranged marriages. <laughs> you know, I don't want to go out and find my soulmate. I want to know that I'm legally binded to a woman named Fatima, and my family's three goats richer because of it. <laughs> like, I have, a, I have a hard time with girls. I'm so good at talking to girls, they instantly think I'm gay. <laughs> and I, I get friend zoned a lot. Have you ever been to the friend zone? I've been to the friend zone so many times, I started paying the electric bill. I had one of my friends come up and tell me, I want you to be my mate of honor. Not mate of honor, <laughs> mate of honor. I'm like, so you don't only want to friends on me now. You want it up on display at your wedding? I'll be up there in a pink suit. All the other bridesmaids hate me because uh, she picked a guy over them. I'm going to be standing behind the groom watching you walk down the aisle. We're both crying for different reasons. <laughs> and then I'm going to be doing the speech at the reception and be like, you know what? I hope your mom's right and you're miserable. <laughs> Cheers. <laughs> uh, my parents think it's their job now to find me a woman. Uh, I, I go to a private Christian university, and my mom sends me the girls in the marketing, and she just <laughs> says, find them. <laughs> like, I'm going to walk around, finally find them, be like, yeah, can, can my mom just quickly talk to you real quick, please? Also, do you want a camel or a goat? for this transaction. <laughs> no, mom, it's, it's America. It's not love by force. It's love by feelings. She doesn't get that. But uh, I, went to, I graduated from a private Christian university, which is great. Uh, the girls at private Christian universities, there's only two spectrums. Uh, there's girls who uh, will marry you after knowing you for a week. And then there's girls who are in a relationship with Jesus. So I've, I've tried to get on that side. I'm trying to grow out my beard. Growing out my hair, <laughs> posting my carpentry on Instagram. <laughs> I'm really going for that. Uh, I, I have a Middle Eastern mom, so it's hard to like feel freedom in America. Uh, I, I studied film at the university so I can make a horror film with my mom as the main villain. Because I'd rather have Michael Myers in my closet than my mom taking off her shoe, throwing it at me, and doing a matrix, going around the corner, hitting me every time. <laughs> I'd rather have uh, Freddy Krueger in my dreams than uh, checking my phone and seeing I have eight missed calls from mama. <laughs> like, my mom is legit. Like, she's kicked me while driving. And I was in the back. <laughs> uh, she, she also is the, my moral compass. I don't know when she did the voiceovers, but she's always in my head. <laughs> like, I can't do anything without my mom's voice coming in, her thick, accented voice. Like, uh, I'm at a, I accidentally walk into a bar, accidentally take a sip of a drink, and my mom's <laughs> voice comes in. What are you doing? <laughs> I will rip your lips off if you take another sip. I'm at the movie theater by myself, and the unnecessary naughty scene comes up. And I'm by myself, and I hear, close your eyes. God is watching you. <laughs> God is watching you. And I'm covering my eyes at a movie theater alone. Or even, like, I'm up here doing comedy, and she goes, don't do my accent. <laughs> Thank you. I'm John. Great to be with you. Just want to give a shout out to all the students in HTC Youth or Harbor Trinity Church in Costa Mesa. Hope you guys are holding up pretty good. Miss y'all and hope to see you soon. Well, Rachel's in the booth and she's about to have a conversation with Gavi, Dove Award winner for Rap Hip Hop Song of the Year with Fight For Me. Rachel, take it away. Hey, Gavi, how's it going? How's your lockdown situation? So there's, it's a really negative time, but I found a lot of joy within it. Like I'm spending more time with my family. I have a lake in the back of my house, so I get to go fishing. Awesome. Uh, <laughs> we go walking a lot, um, but everything's pretty much shut down right now in South Florida and Broward County. Have you caught any fish in your lake? Of course. Yes. I'm the best fisherman. No, I'm just kidding. Uh, have you cooked it? That's the question. No, you don't want to cook that fish from my lake. That lake is dirty water. Oh, uh, lovely. I just do it for fun. Yeah, I've caught a few fish, though. Nice. That's a good like hobby to pick up. Yes, get outdoors for a little bit. Yeah. Okay, so Guavi, tell me a little bit more about your togetherness as a family during this time of quarantine. 
Yeah, a lot of time is just uh, running around inside the house. Um, my daughter, she's four, so it's still school time for her. Yeah. Uh, um, we're eating a lot, yes. <laughs> which is not good. <laughs> uh, and uh, yeah, a lot of uh, Zoom meetings as far as like Definitely. friends, uh, work, um, Have you Bible guys picked studies. up any new games or anything? Games or activities as a family? We started off really strong on the board games and then it just kind of died down. It's like, I'm tired of playing Uno. Okay. So now we're like on a Netflix thing. There's like a little cool documentary going around. Yes. Tiger King. <laughs> Tiger King is yeah. one of them. That's <laughs> very interesting show. Fascinating. <laughs> Okay, so you have an album coming up on April 10th called Heathen. I, I would do. love to know a little bit more about the name behind the album. Yeah, Heathen, it's such a, a bold name. Uh, it could be scary or it could be a really great story of like a testimony. Um, and it's broken down in three different ways. So Heathen is obviously a sinner. And then Heathen also, the original Greek term is... Uh, ethnicity, different cultural background, and then Gentile. And I think there's a lot of different areas in that that I want to impact and share my story through that of what I've gone through, where I've seen this word be thrown around in uh, Christian culture. Yeah. Um, I think one of my biggest missions right now is just to open and bring awareness uh, to Christian culture. Uh, there's a lot of things that happens that sometimes we don't realize it and we're like, whoa, I just followed a tradition. And uh, I just want to encourage believers to really dig in the word, uh, dig in the relationship with God above all. Um, Christian culture is very important. Culture is very important to me as a whole. But at the end of the day, Jesus has to be the center of the focus. So um, that's my mission with this, uh, is not championing being a sinner, uh, but championing that God is your identity. Uh, people may label you something, and if somebody says you're not normal, say thank you for realizing that I'm set apart and I'm not normal. So good. And what, with that album title, I think it's such an open, a do, an opening door to non-believers to just start a conversation about what is a heathen, what is a believer, what is a sinner, what does it mean Earth. to be saved. Yeah. Earth. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. What perfect timing for your album to be coming out as people are looking for hope and healing in this world. Yeah, right now uh, we just released a single called Not Too Far. Uh, I was very hesitant to even release my album when everything was starting. And I thought to myself, I was like, I know there's a big thing going around as far as social distancing. And I was thinking this is not a time to be spiritually distant from God. So uh, with that song, Not Too Far, I just felt like the piece is just came together god was narrating story when i thought i was yeah. and we're not too far from god at this moment uh we definitely need a lot of hope this is a reality that we're in right now yeah. so i want to take away from that um but i'm just praying for all of us and especially if, uh i was just reading about the nurses and doctors that are what they're going through right now so definitely praying a lot for them during this time okay well again i really appreciate you just making the time for us and for sure. No, thank you. Yeah, I hope you have a great um, launch for your album. Thank you so much. Yes. Okay. It's okay. <laughs> Take care. Hey guys, Clayton King here from South Carolina coming to you from my office, which is in my home, which is where I'm spending most of my time now, and I know that you are too. Hey, what a weird time to be alive, right? I mean, nobody saw this coming. It's so strange to be home every day. We have two teenage sons. I've been in student ministry for 34 years, and now I've got two of my own students. They're 17 and 14, and they're home. We love having them here at the house and spending time with them, but it's also kind of uh, discouraging because they don't get to see their friends. And like you, I'm sure you're missing being in a place where you can talk to your friends, interact with them. I mean, some of you are probably wondering, are we ever going to get to go back to school? My 17-year-old son was supposed to have the prom this week, and it was canceled. My 14-year-old son plays travel basketball, <clears throat> and his entire season was canceled after four practices. I mean, it's such a strange time to be alive. And I know that a lot of us are feeling doubt and discouragement, maybe some anxiety, some fear. 
We don't really know what to expect because we can't control what's going on in the world right now. We've just never seen anything like this before in our lifetime. But I want to encourage you today, it's okay to feel those emotions. It's okay to have those feelings. But when you feel the fear and the panic and the anxiety and the discouragement, don't let those feelings define you in the moment. Every time you face a problem in life, remember this, God always has a promise for every problem. So I wanted to encourage you today with a story from the Bible. It's the first Easter morning, the day that we celebrate every spring where Jesus rose from the dead. And I want to show you that some people in that story were feeling some of the same feelings and some of the same emotions that you're feeling right now. Jesus had just been crucified on Friday. He was buried and spent all day in the tomb on Saturday. And then on Sunday morning, some women, a group of women that loved Jesus and were his followers, they went to his tomb to prepare him for the burial. He was already buried, but this was a Jewish custom. And when they got there, they are probably really discouraged, depressed, anxious, afraid. Their Lord and Savior had just died. There was darkness all around them. They couldn't predict the future. But I want to show you that even though you may feel like the world is falling apart around you, God always comes through in the end. Let me read this to you from Luke chapter 24. It says, when the women approached the tomb, they went in, but they did not find the body of Jesus. While they were confused about this, suddenly two men stood by them in dazzling white clothes. So the women were terrified and they bowed down to the ground. I heard one pastor say it this way. When they got to the tomb, nobody expected nobody. Nobody expected to find no actual body in the tomb. They were surprised. When they got there, there was no Jesus, but there were two angels. And the angels asked them this question. Why are you looking for the living among the dead? He is not here, but he has risen. Remember how he spoke to you when he was still in Galilee? These angels ask them a question. Why are you looking for the living among the dead? In other words, this is a tomb. Only dead people are in tombs. Jesus isn't dead. Jesus is alive. What a surprise, right? I mean, wouldn't you have been surprised? By the way, anytime an angel asks me a question, it's a good question. Why do you seek the living among the dead? A lot of us, I think, are being really challenged and stretched right now. I mean, sports are canceled. We can't go to basketball games. We can't go to baseball games. We can't go to church on Sunday. We can't gather together. We can't go to a concert. We can't even be among our own friends. There's so many things right now that are unpredictable and things that we can't control. But imagine the surprise from those women when they get to the tomb and they remembered what Jesus had already told them. Hey, I'm going to die. But the good news is I'm also going to be raised from the dead. And I want to encourage you that even though we're living in a very tough time right now, and these are dark days for the human race, we serve a God who is a God of resurrection. We serve a God who keeps his promises. And I want you to feel permission to feel all the emotions you're going through right now. Don't feel condemned for feeling those things. But I also want to encourage you to fight for faith. I want to encourage you to get a copy of the Bible, whether it's on your phone or whether it's an old school copy like this one that I read every day, and, and study the scriptures and read the promises of God and be encouraged that the same God who gave his son Jesus to be sacrificed in our place on the cross is the same God who raised his son Jesus from the dead so we could be forgiven of sin, so we could have the promise of resurrection and eternal life. We're going through a tough time right now, but this isn't the end and this won't define us. This will teach us how to press into God deeper, to have a more robust faith. And one day we will all be in the kingdom of God, those that belong to Jesus, and we'll understand that God keeps every single promise. I wanna encourage you with that word today. Just like the women who went to find the tomb empty were discouraged and filled with doubt and fear, they got a good report when they realized that Jesus was risen. You may feel those emotions right now, but hang on, have faith. Better days are coming. Well, everybody, we have reached the end of our first ever Juice House Party. 
We hope that you have had as much fun as we've had. Make sure to follow us on all social media platforms at Juice TV Network. Be sure to check back on Instagram soon to find out which youth pastor won the switch, which one is getting the sports pack, and who is going home with the oh-so-mysterious mystery bucket. We love you all, and we hope you have a great night. Stay safe out there. Wash your hands. Stay six feet apart, and we'll see you soon.